Senator Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lou, thank you for being here. Before I start asking questions of you, I do want to make a point that in many ways, Israel is now fighting a war on a different front in addition to the war with Hamas. It's a war of misinformation. Uh, there's no doubt, and unfortunately, the media carrying the false narrative regarding the hospital bombing, this narrative originated with Hamas, the same people who murdered women and children, same people who burned babies, who beheaded little ones. And as a result of that lie carried by New York Times and the AP and others, a summit in Jordan was canceled. Other meetings that Biden had scheduled canceled. Literally protests around the globe at our embassies and an attempt, very clear and specific attempt, to weaken Israel's position. Rather than waiting for all the facts that carried the Hamas narrative, that is dangerous, and it could be more costly in lives than the current conflict and the long-term impact of a misinformation campaign. Frankly, a misinformation war could be deadly to the efforts of Israel, deadly to the unified support coming from our nation, and something that we should all take very seriously as Americans, and we certainly do not need members of Congress from the squad being a part of the propaganda machine coming out of Washington, D.C. in support of Hamas. I think it's very dangerous. In these times, we need the truth. And the truth is incredibly important, and getting the facts should be necessary before reporting on this remarkable, frankly disgusting, war that we're seeing perpetrated against Israel. Uh, you've heard a number of my colleagues talk about your role in the previous, the Obama administration and the impact that your role has had on resources being released through the JCPOA for Iran. And frankly, I think many of the questions are fair and your commentary are, is necessary. Iran policy, is without question Israel policy. They are the greatest enemy that Israel faces and frankly the greatest funders of terrorism, state funders of terrorism anywhere in the world. Uh, and we know that 90% of the funds that Hamas receives comes from Iran. And one of the things that we have debated and will continue to debate, I'm sure, the $6 billion paid for hostages when Obama paid $400 million. I said then, several years ago, that that will only raise the price on an American's head abroad, and $6 billion only makes it worse. I, I heard you say that the money can only be used for humanitarian aid. I will just say that why you see, why you see the president of, of, of Iran said it very clearly that they will use the money in any way they want to use the money, period beyond the fact that money is fungible, is really important as well. My question for you, though, is that the administration insists that the $6 billion transfer is in no way associated with any efforts to renegotiate the nuclear deal, although those efforts have been going on for secretly for, for months. And so my question to you is, do you believe that there are, are that without need to submit the, do you believe that there are any efforts going forward on a negotiation? And if there are, would there be a need for that to be submitted to Congress? So, uh, Senator, um, I'm not in the administration and I'm not uh, privy to the current state of affairs. I'm not aware of any ongoing uh, negotiations. And I said earlier, this is not the moment, um, even uh, if one believes that someday a negotiated uh, solution may be right. And I have to agree with something you said. It shouldn't be that hard to call out atrocities like we saw two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago. Some things are just what they are. Yes. And butchering f almost 1,500 babies, old people, Holocaust survivors, hand-to-hand, -hand, face to face is barbarism that whatever one thinks about the right and wrong of different positions in this conflict should be easy to call out. I'm proud 
uh, to see President Biden taking the stand that he's been taking. And even this morning, when I heard his comments on the horrible bombing of a hospital in Gaza, you know, he was not giving into disinformation. He was shooting straight. In the fog of the moment, you don't have perfect information. And he said, from everything he sees, it was not Israel that did it. That isn't changing where people out in the streets in some countries think it is. It's very dangerous, and you yeah. have to call out the facts. Well, one of the things that you just reminded me of a scripture, it says, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And one of the things that we've seen taking place today uh, in, for the last 10 days or so is the atrocities and the evil brought upon, uh, brought upon the Jewish people uh, again. Uh, I assume that you would say that you had no actual clue what was happening in the administration, so not, not surprised by that. I would certainly say that some evidence suggests that, the, that their uranium enrichment activities began to taper off this summer, weeks before the transfer was announced. Uh, I know that I'm running short on time. It appears that the five minutes moves faster down here for me. So uh, <laughs> do I have another 30 the seconds? The senator may proceed. Thank you very much, sir. Just a really quick uh, thought here, uh, Mr. Liu. You were the OMB director in 2011. My assumption is that when uh, President Obama made the decision to strike against Osama bin Laden and his compound, that you, you thought that was a good, good deal, good idea. I, I, I don't want there to be any confusion. The OMB director does not participate oh, in the yeah, targeting yes. decision like I, that. I'm under, I'm, <laughs> I've seen you as a Treasury Secretary yeah, the yeah, Finance Committee, yeah. so I recognize the I, role. I, I, I shared the feeling that it was a, a just action uh, to to address uh, an act of terrible murder in my city of New York and in other places. Yeah. Final comment is that the, over the weekend we saw IDF uh, will hunt, say they will hunt down every last man with the blood of Israel's children on their hands. Would you support Israel pursuing the perpetrators of this heinous attack on foreign soil as we did in 2011? Senator, I, I, I hesitate to answer a hypothetical question that I don't know the, the scope of. What I will, will say without condition is that Israel has not just a right, but as the president has said, the responsibility to defend its people. And as we were talking about earlier in this hearing, it's not for revenge. It's for defending your people. And uh, I think Israel has the right to do that, and they should do it, they will, by their basic nature, do it in a way yes. that tries to minimize collateral damage. Well, Chairman, you've been very gracious with the extension of my five and a half minutes. So I really appreciate that very much, sir. <laughs> I, I got to get your, your clock there. The, <laughs> you've extended the day. I don't know how you did it. It's, it's called football time, sir. I, I got it. <laughs> Senator